This is Andy Purewell for Boxing News. I'm joined by Ricky Hatton over Zoom. Ricky, one of the British boxing sons. How are you? I'm great, yeah. I can't complain. Um, keeping busy um, in the gym, working with me lads. Um, and yeah, family's good. So uh, no complaints from uh, from this end. Yeah, good, good place at the minute. <clears throat> Glad to hear it, Ricky. And obviously, some very good and exciting news for yourself. You've been inducted into the Boxing Hall of Fame for 2024. Where does this rank for yourself, Ricky? Given everything you achieved in your career, how high how high of an honour is this? I think it's got to be up there with with, with any anything that I've ever done to be in the in the Hall of Fame. I mean, to be honest with you, you know, I have dreamt of becoming a world champion, but never thought it would actually happen. And I was able to, you know, to to do that and and do it four times over in two weight divisions, you know. So, and all the, you know, the the, the fights in, in Las Vegas, or the city of Manchester Stadium, and all them. I thought, um, thought my boxing um, achievements were gone. <laughs> to be honest with you, I thought, you know, uh, and but I think to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. <clears throat> I think I always knew I, I, I always knew I was, I was pretty good at boxing. I had half a chance of doing pretty good, but I mean to be inducted in the Hall of Fame, you know, you can be a world champion, and it doesn't mean you can get you, you get inducted into the Hall of Fame. You know, but to be inducted into the Hall of Fame, you're up there with uh, alongside some of the greatest fighters of of all time. Wow, you know, you know, there's you know, there's, there's not enough words I can use to to describe how uh, <clears throat> delighted I am. To be honest with you, yeah. Ricky, when you have an honour such as this, um, is there any point in your career when you start to think about but like, how much you'd love to be inducted into the Hall of Fame? Do you ever think about it when you are actually fighting? Well, that's that's for that's for, for, for them to decide and people decide how um, you know how people make their own mind up how good that they you know that, that they think I am, but. Um, <clears throat> um, yeah, you never think you never ever think you're going to be in in the Hall of Fame. To be honest with you, but I mean, I did. Um, I never ducked anybody in my career. Do you know what I mean? You know, when you think you know the two people until my comeback fight, the two people that beat me were probably go down as the two greatest, or arguably two of the greatest, you know, of, of all time. You know, and my win against um, Costa Zoo, You know, he was I think number two pound for pound, and they said at the time. Um, that they would go down as one of the best ever wins in a British boxing ring, you know, and that's where it still stands today. So, um, <clears throat> but, you know, so I, I knew I'd, you know, I'd, I'd, I'm going to win two weights, you know, world titles in two weight divisions, you know, four times over is, uh, but it's still to get the, you know, I know, I know I'm very proud of my achievements, as I'm sure everybody was proud of my achievements, but still to get the phone call, you know, you don't, you know, you, you know, you know, nobody's going to sit there and say, oh, it won't be long before the Hall of Fame's on to me. You know, when you get the phone call like that, it really is. It's just, uh, it, well, words can't, you can't put it into it. Hall of Fame, you know what I mean? It's madness. I mean, I'm, I'm still there, you know, the kid from Hattersley Council Estate on the outskirts of Manchester, you know what I mean? And even though I know I'm, I'm very proud of my achievements, as I think everyone was, I think even so, I think to, to be in the notes into Hall of Fame, that, it's up there. One of the best accolades I've got. <clears throat> Ricky, it would obviously be remiss of me not to reflect on some of those amazing achievements you had in your career, some of those memorable nights. Before we come on to those world title fights and those nights out in Vegas, what would you say was the most important night of your career beneath world level? Beneath world level? <clears throat> uh, to be honest with you, it, it was, um, I think, to win the British title. You know, was always a you know a big thing. I think if you speak to any world champion, or certainly the majority of world champions, the dream is to become a world champion. But before you obviously go on to, to them honors, I think most um, former world champions said they wanted a Lonsdale belt on the mantelpiece, didn't they? You know, so you know, so to fight for the the British title. And um, some pe people still come up to me today and say, um, you know, one of one of my favorite fights was the British title fight against John Faxton. You know, because. Uh, it was under a mile an hour and it was all action, the bloodbath of a fight. You know, I you know was cut in the first 10 seconds. I think John had a couple of cuts and knocked lumps out of each other for, for 12 rounds. And um, you know, to you know, to win the British title, but to be in it, you know, my biggest fights, my biggest win was Costa Zoo, and you know, to have him quit on the stool, you know what I mean, in such a war of a fight in my hometown, he's brilliant. 
And if everyone wanted to win the British title, you know, you'd, you'd want to be in it in a fight where they were going to be talking about it in years to come, which I think they, they, they will be talking about the Faxton fight in years to come because, I mean, all of a sudden I was a big one coming through, the big name coming through, you know, the next prospect and everything. And then all of a sudden, you know, he's caught in the first 10 seconds, so we thought it was over. And, it, it, you know... It was it was never boring, was it, with Ricky Atten? Let's put it that way. <laughs> nice, <laughs> Ricky. Um, obviously, you mentioned it a couple of times there about Costa Zouf by one which many see as kind of a crowning night for yourself in, in in your time in British boxing. How much do you still remember from from that night? And uh, do you watch it back regularly? What's your reflections on it all? I've not watched it back for a bit, to be honest with you. But um, <clears throat> I remember every punch, every second. To be honest with you, I, I mean. <laughs> Seeing as though I've got punched in the in in the head for you know well over you know twenty five years or something like that, I'm, I'm I'm still quite good. I can remember I can remember every punch from me. I'm at my first ever amateur fight. I feel very very proud that I've been able to keep the keep um keep the thing between my ears going. <laughs> to be honest with you, but uh, <clears throat> no, I think any to win a world title is a fantastic achievement. Any world title to win a world title is something else, but. Sometimes you can be a world champion without being the best in your weight division. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, with there being other versions, you know, but I mean, obviously with Kosciuszko, Zou, he was universally recognised as the undisputed champion. He was the best in my my weight. So I wasn't just becoming a world champion. I was becoming the world champion in the best in my weight division. And, and also, I think he was ranked number two pound for pound in any weight division, you know, um, at the time. So I think, and he was destroying everyone. So that's what, with my... You know, with, with my cut problem and me sometimes leaky defence because I was too attacking minded sometimes. Um, I think everyone says, We love you, Ricky. We're all behind you. And my heart says, Ricky, but no, I think he's going to walk onto one here against Costa Zoo. But I did. But that's what I did. I think me and Billy Graham had the right tactics. You know, where, where most people were scared of his power, we'd go straight on the back foot and ran straight into the firing line where his right hand would go. You know, I stayed close to him. And um, very, very dangerous to, to try and get close to Costa Zoo, <laughs> bearing in mind how, you know, the power he had. But um, it worked, you know what I mean? And um, as the rounds went on, he got a little bit weaker, a little bit weaker, a little bit weaker. And then for him to quit on his stool at the end of the 11th round, such a formidable champion and punching machine, to sort of like sit on the stool, the stool and go, no more, <laughs> no more. Uh, I couldn't have written my best ever night to have been that in Manchester in front of me, my home fans as, as well. And uh, <clears throat> like I mentioned earlier about the Faxton fight, people still talk about that Costa Zoo night in Manchester um, to this to this day. I think we've been very, very proud. We've had some good nights in Manchester and Man Mancunians fighting in Manchester, you know what I mean? But uh, I think that one will always have a special um, part in Manchester's um Boxing history, if you like that, it was a very, very special night. Fighters like Koshizu don't come to the UK too often, do they? But you know, he did, and uh, yeah, we, we did the business here. Yeah. You mentioned obviously, you know, Billy Graham there and the <clears throat> role he played in that fight. You had some great nights together. What specifically for you and working with him made him stand out as such a unique trainer, made your relationship so good? On yeah. that? I was a body puncher anyway before I went to Billy Graham. You know, my ex amateur coach, Mr. Paul Dunn, God rest his soul. Um, uh, he taught me that he was an ex professional. So he taught me how to slip and roll and, you know, and body punch and, you know, stuff like that. And then I went around all the gyms in Manchester, you know, um, you know, I went to Brian Hughes's gym in Collier's, you know, where Pat Barrett's doing a fantastic job now with the boys. Um, and yeah, and, and I still learned a lot. From 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 Pat and uh, and and Brian, but uh, then when I went to Billy Graham's, Billy Graham had the body belt. <clears throat> that was Billy Graham's, you know, key thing. And I just um, when I got talking on to, to Billy about fight, fights in, of the of years gone by and what 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 did you think about this, Rick, and what did you think about that? Well, I thought this and I thought that, and everything we we just clicked. We were both just so, totally on the same wavelength when it comes to, to boxing and, you know, and, and just characters. He was like the blind lead in the blind in many ways. You know, we were we were, we were so similar, you know, in, 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 in character and that. <clears throat> and I knew that when Billy was in that corner, you know, I mean, boxing's a great, great sport in it when it's all going the right way. You know what I mean? But it can be an absolutely brutal, brutal sport when things are going wrong. You know, and some nights we got there where we've been... It's been going wrong, you know what I mean? Or you've not quite been performing, you had to dig in. And, you know, I knew every time when I looked into Billy's eyes and he looked into mine that he was there for Ricky Hatton, you know what I mean? He wasn't there to, you know, to 
you know, he, he wasn't there, for, you know, to you know to pay his electric or pay his his, his, his heating or something like that. You know, he, he wasn't he, he wasn't there for the paycheck, which obviously was you know was important. He was there for Ricky Hatton, and I knew the trust we had in each other. You know, the you know you, you know it's not being soppy. It was a proper a proper love thing. You know, the, the trust and closeness that we. We had you can't buy that, and I think you know in the hardest game of all, which is boxing, that's who you need in your corner, someone you can trust like that and look in their eyes, and that's what it was with me and Billy. It was brilliant. Ricky, moving forwards, obviously you had some fantastic <clears throat> wins along the way up until the Floyd fight, obviously the Collazo fight, Castillo fight, um, but the Floyd fight. Uh, one thing I've always been interested to get a bit more of an insight in is, is how loyal your fans were. They travelled everywhere. And look, my father, look, I'm from Birmingham. My father travelled from Birmingham for that fight without a ticket. He's one of those thousands who went over without a ticket. And he actually, of all things, he ended up bumping into Tommy Hearns into one of the bars who sorted him a ticket for the fight. Why is it that everyone up and down the country just seemed to love Ricky Hatton? Um, <clears throat> I think he was just one of the boys, wasn't it? And that's hard to say, one of the boys, when you're in... When you're when you're a professional athlete, <laughs> and I think I don't think it helped myself. I don't think it helped myself sometimes. I think to me, I think I could have had a longer career and a lot. Like, I maybe could have even been a better boxer if I hadn't burnt the candle at both ends, up and down, up and down in weight. You know, what I mean, uh, couldn't have done me no good. And, and eventually, it did catch up with me towards the last few fights. I, I could feel that it had caught up to me. I mean, to be honest, my fight, I wasn't destined with my style to have like, a longevity type. Type um, career, you know what I mean. You know my style was always, you know, you know, you know. I didn't mind taking, you know, taking a couple to get one in. You know what I mean. And I was up and down in weight, and um, but I think people could see me. I think the fans that come and support me could support me because I was no different to them. Even though I was a world champion, you know, and had made a few quid and stuff like that, they they all did saw me as one of the boys. You know what I mean. He's a good lad, Ricky. Let look at him there. He's he's in the pub. He's having a pint. He's playing darts. He's Sat in the stand watching City, you know, he's he's in the local pub, he's you know that's I mean, and, and it's you know, people congratulate me for that, and I don't know why. Because I mean, what why why isn't that what you should do anyway? Be nice to people, never slag no one off, you know, just be one of the boys down to earth, never slag anyone, and that's you know, people um liked my style because I was aggressive, a body puncher, you know, fought the best, you know, was fearless, you know, in in that area, <clears throat> and always, no matter how successful I got, I always stayed the same. And I think, uh, I think the fans could see that, and I think that's what it was. I think they were, you know, they, they, they were, there were many other ways. They, they must have felt like they were going cheering on the mate. But I think, I think that's the best way I can describe it. I think, yeah. Ricky, just reflect on that Floyd fight for me. Obviously, it wasn't meant to be on the night. <clears throat> The referee's involvement certainly raised a few questions <clears throat> as well. Um, what, what do you make of it all now? You can look back, though, and the entire build-up around it as well. Oh, it was brilliant. You know, the 24-7 series they did, you know, because me and Floyd couldn't have been any more different, you know, with characters, you know what I mean? You know, I'm the humble, you know, Jack the Lad, you know, you know, kid next door type, you know, one of the boys, all that, that. And Floyd's, you know, uh, was the opposite, wasn't it? You know what I mean? You know, materialistic stuff, you know, look at me watch, look at me ring, look at me pinky, you know what I mean? Look at me chain around my neck, look at me suit, you know, who gives a shit, you know what I mean? It was, it because it was good cop, bad cop, you know what I mean? Which made the 24-7 absolutely sensational. Um, to be honest with you, I might stick it on and watch it in a bit. It's been that long since I watched it. It was brilliant, wasn't it? But no... Um, <clears throat> Floyd will go down as arguably the greatest of, of all time, you know what I mean? And I moved up a weight division to, you know, to fight him. Even though my fight at welterweight, my first fight at welterweight against Calazo wasn't a good, you know, a good move. I think I struggled moving up the way. That's why I moved back down. When the opportunity came to fight Floyd, I thought I'm going back up again. And um, I thought Castillo won the first fight. I thought Cat Marcus Maidana, you know, pushed him pretty close. So I thought to myself, I think I've got a higher work rate than... Than them, you know what I mean. I love the, uh, you know, the speed and I'm, I'm moving in on my opponents quick and stuff like that. So I thought to myself, if I get close enough, you know what I mean, I'll, I'll definitely throw more punches than him. And sadly, I wasn't allowed to get close to him. You know what I mean? They, you know, the the the, the um, Joe Cortez who refereed my fight against Castillo, and the Joe Cortez who refereed my fight against Floyd. Me and Castillo were in fighters, sat there inside, you know, working away. You know what I mean? 
And Joe Carter has just stood, stood there and let us get on with it. Floyd, nah. I don't think, I think the minute I got off that plane, I was I was never going to win that fight, whether it be on the judges or whether it be, <laughs> whether it be, you know, on the referee or anything like that. I thought, no, I think they thought, we don't want that Brit taking them belts back to England, you know. So I, I honestly believe that. But I'm not saying... I might have got beat anyway because he's Floyd Mayweather. You know, I don't want to sound any bitter and blame it all entirely on the referee. He might have beat me anyway. He probably put me on my own. I wanted was a, a fair, fair crack of the whip. Do you know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know, if it's at a distance, let us fight as a distance. If it's at close, let us fight up close. Just give me a fair crack of the whip. And I think he, nobody can... I'm not going to say that the reason why I got beat was Joe Cortez, but let's just say... You don't know boxing. If you if you if you don't think he had a bad night that night, then you don't know boxing as far as I'm concerned, because he had a stinker, didn't he? And I'm not saying I had a one anyway. I'm not saying that's the main reason. That that's the reason why I got beat. He might have beat me anyway. But um no, that was not one of Joe Carter's best nights. And I think any, I think a Mayweather fan has got to surely say that. Ricky, um, fast forward to me for the Manny Pacquiao fight as well. <laughs> you said your two losses to arguably two of the greatest of all times. What do you take away from that Pacquiao fight? I think there was too many miles on the clock. Um, to be honest with you, I um, I wasn't really in a I wasn't really in a very good place. To be honest with you, I think that and as I mentioned earlier, the ballooning up in weight, I think, was starting to affect me. You know, I, I could I could feel. Kerry Kay has said to me, you know, one day you're going to hit a brick wall with this up and down in weight. You know, and and don't get me wrong, it took a while for me. <laughs> I got away with murder with it. <clears throat> but eventually it did hit me. And I think that going into the Pacquiao fight, I think there was too many miles on the clock. There's a few things away in my personal life that wasn't really getting on, um, wasn't really getting on, wasn't really going well. Um, and Manny was knocking everyone out, destroying everyone at the at, at the time, you know. So, you know, you're fighting one of the best fighters that there's ever been, you know what I mean? Going in there with not the right frame of mind, you know. Few many too many miles on the clock, burning the candle at both ends. You know what I mean. I, I don't think it was at my best, but I um, uh, yeah. What can I say? To be honest with you, you know what I mean. I think to be honest, he knocked me down twice in the first round, and then the um, the second round, he, you know, I, I was under the cosh again at the start of it. But then as the round got on, I thought if I could just get through this second round because I felt like I, there was a little bit of me felt like I took his best, <laughs> and I'd come through the storm a little bit. Uh, that's what I was thinking at the time in the fight, but you know how long I was because he uh, he nailed me with that punch two seconds before the end of the round. I think if I could if I could have got my ass on that stool at the end of the second, maybe I could have turned it around and that maybe maybe not. But um, yeah, devastating, you know, to be knocked out like that, um, destroyed in two rounds like that, and even no money was destroying everyone at the time. That was um, I had to look in the mirror and go, listen, your days. Up now, Rick, boxing. That's it. You've got to call it a day. So, uh, yeah, but I mean, um, I really, I, it sent me in a real bad, dark place, getting beat by Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao. The defeats really absolutely ruined me um, back then. But now I can look back on them, you know, when you see what Manny went on to do after he fought me and then what Manny, when Floyd went on after he fought me, instead of looking at them fights back, you know, with, you know, with embarrassment, now I look back with pride. You know, I enjoy watching them now. You know, so uh, and that's because the, the, I'm in a I'm in a nice place now. I'm in a good place. <clears throat> yeah, I'm interested to know. Let's say if you was in your prime and you was boxing in this day and age, and you look at the current crop of say super lights, or if there's somebody from light who could move up, is there anyone who you would love to have tested yourself against? If I start reading off your likes of your Josh Taylors, your Jack Cattrall's, Javonta Davis, Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia, Shakur Stevenson, amongst many others, is there anyone who you would love to Terence Crawford, even if he was going to throw him welterweight as well? Anyone yeah. you'd have tested yourself against? All of them, to be honest with you, you know, what I mean, I never shied away from, um, you know, from from anyone, you know. There's pre, you know, the, you can see fighters, can't you know, that when they they win fights, you know, they they have a couple of easy, back in back in the day, a couple of easy, easy defenses, you know, what I mean, just to get a few quid in the bank and this like that. But you know, <clears throat> I I I beat Postal Zoo, you know, and then I fought Carlos Miles, who was the WBA champion. Then I moved up away, fought Louis Calizo, who was the WBA welterweight champion. Then I moved back down and fought Juan Urango, who was the IBF light welterweight champion. Then I fought old Louis Castillo, who was in the top 10 pound for pound at the time. Then I fought Floyd Mayweather. Then I've told, you know, it's not as if I've um, shied away, you know, for, and then, you know, after, after Mayweather, it was Lascano at the City of Manchester Stadium. 
Uh, so another big night of a boxing. I mean, then Malinaji, he was my nearest rival in the like, well, twenty division at the time. Then Manny Pacquiao. So all the guys you mentioned, I'd have loved to have jumped in and give it a go with them. I think uh, the one, the couple of the fights that I did miss out on was probably I, I pretty much fought the majority of everyone on it, but um, I always looked back and thought I'd love to have fought the great Arturo Gatti, God rest his soul. You know what I mean? I think that would have been a a barnstormer of a fight, and I'd love to have fought Mickey Ward um, because we were both body punches. That would have been a toe to toe slug, wasn't it? Miguel Cotto was one, another one that just slipped, you know, through the net. And it wasn't, we, um, we was mentioned, you know, of fighting each other at the time, but then, you know, we, we all went different routes. It wasn't through uh, avoiding each other, but I, I always look back now and think, what if, you know, if that fight come off, how do you think we'd have gone on that one thing? Um, one thing, it'd have been a great fight, you know, fight fans fight, wouldn't it? Them three. Yeah, brilliant. Ricky, I know you're still very much involved in boxing. Obviously, you're training <clears> boxers <throat> now. Um, but you've obviously had Campbell, your son, unfortunately, lose his first fight of his professional career recently. Um, what did you make of that fight, that loss? And since then, obviously, he's split from Matthew. Yeah, well, he, 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 um, he didn't fight a good fight, to be honest with you. But, I mean, there's no... Uh, there's no blame on, 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 on anything. It's just an experience. Do you know what I mean? I, um, uh, he just, you know, he's not learning. It was his first 10 rounder and he, he didn't know how to pace it. You know what I mean? You know, he, he set off like a, like a chicken with no head, you know, the, the, the first round. And it's like, you know, Campbell has a good engine. You know, he has a good engine. He's like his dad. I had a good engine. But if I set off at a pace like that, even I had a gas, you know, coming down the the, the home straight. You know, you've got to know when to put your foot on the gas, when to take your foot off the gas, when to try and take your, you know, a little bit from your opponent while conserving a little bit yourself and, you know, and and stuff like that. And, you know, even with a good engine, you know, one thing having a good engine is, 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 is is should be a luxury, not a necessity. There's no point, you know, you know, you can set off a high pace, but if it's a high pace of crap, and wasted punches and, you know, not landing and hitting the target. I mean, some of the, you know, Matthew was, uh, and Campbell, I beg your pardon, was throwing punches 10 to the dozen. And I, t- I promise you, in a long 10 drawn out, 10 round fight like that, takes more out of you than the opponent. If you're throwing them 10 to the dozen and you're not landing any of them, you know what I mean? And that's, uh, and he just, you know, he, second round, I thought, he'll slow down here now, Campbell, he'll slow down, he'll think, you know, and he didn't. He went quicker and quicker and quicker. And in the end, he was, you know, he showed, you know, tremendous heart and guts and characters, you know, to dig in there. You know, the last certainly in the in the last round, the last the last round, I was had me, me out in my mouth, you know, thinking, oh my god, he might get stopped here. But he dug in because he's got he's got that. But the one thing is, you know, he's not gone in there and got his head boxed off and got. But he's 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 been outmanned. He's been out experienced, you know. But I mean, he can get that back. You know, you get that. That's what experience is. It's experience. It's time. So we can turn the, you know, the the clock back. You know, he's he's he's, he's like me. You know what I mean? He's 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 not shy of a, a set of balls. I'll tell you that. You know what I mean? So he'll, he'll bounce. He'll bounce back. You know, and he's just he just fancied a change. You know, for Matthew. Matthew's done a fantastic job with him. Been working with him for for years. Even you know when when he was just coming through as an amateur. You know, Matthew has been working with him and done a great job for him. But I think it just. Uh, it's just time. It's his own. Campbell's his own man. He's made his own decision. Just wants to try and uh, <clears throat> try something new. And this game boxing, you only get one choice at this, you know. So if that's the decision he's made, he, he he's got my backing. He's got Matthew's backing. You know what I mean? Me and Matthew have always said, listen, wherever you go, Campbell, you know, wherever you decide to be your next trainer, next, you know, mine and Matthew's doors always open from there for you. We're there for advice. You know what I mean? And that's, you know, and that's it. And I think. Um, I think he, I think his stock and fan base went up in defeat because of the manner of it, you know what I mean, and everything like that. And listen, he'll be back, he'll be back, you know what I mean. That's what that's what fighters do. Is a fighter, he's got a big heart, and he'll come back. And I think, uh, and I've told you, if he does come back, all them people that were knocking him, oh, he's only got what he's got because of his dad and all that crap, like you, you know, that 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 they hear. I think more people are. Thinking no fair play to him, he dug in there and everything. And if he comes back stronger and better, I think I think he'll be respected by them people as well. Yeah. Just two fights I want to get your thoughts on before we wrap this up, Ricky. I'm a horizon involving two guys born in and around Manchester. Obviously, you've got the undisputed bout between Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk. What's your thoughts on that fight and the cut that Tyson suffered? 
Does that change your opinion at all? Is that something you'd imagine Alexander will try and target to get you to open up, make him uncomfortable on the night? He might do, you know, to be honest with you. He's a very, uh, very, very clever fighter, you since isn't he? You know, you don't, you know, you know, <clears throat> you know, Olympic gold medalist, undisputed Commonwealth, undisputed heavyweights, you know, being, you know, so he is very, very clever. I don't think, <clears throat> I think Tyson have had um, the proper job done on it. I think it'll heal. I mean, if it does open in the fight, there's no, there's no, no guarantee it will, it will open just because you know you've had a cut, you know, in, in sparring or your previous fight doesn't mean it's going to reopen. It is a little bit of worry for you, but I mean, if it does open, it would have to be such a horrendous. His eye would have to be hanging out for him to stop that fight because there's so much on the line, so much. You know, they're, they're not going to stop it for just a little. You know, a little bit of blood or a little bit of a nick. You know, his eyeball will have to be hanging off because there's so much on the line and so much at stake. So I don't think <clears throat> the cut will affect the result of the fight. No. What do you think happens with Vashevering? <clears throat> I think it's. Um, I, I'm still going to go for Tyson. Um, I'm going by the. You know, maybe he took um, his pre his previous fight uh, a little bit um, like too lightly. You know, he, he, he was having his first professional fight when he and You know, so. I think Tyson, you know, coming a little bit heavier than he would have normally come in, you know. Um, I think he might have just took him lightly, which is, you know, just we've all, we've all, we've all been there, you know, it can happen, you know what I mean? But, but uh, and the thing, the fact that he's, he's slimmed down, he's in good shape. Um, I'm not, we're not seeing him too many interviews where he's shouting to the rafters, they saying this, I'm going to, you're doss of this, and that, and that, and that, and that. I think he's gone into camp and he's he's hitting it hard and knuckling down and because I think he knows how tough a fight this will be. And I think the fact that it was not his best performance last time, I think that will make him better this time. He want to come back and prove a point and everything like that. <clears throat> on the other hand, he might have too many miles on the clock. You know, when you think, you know, when you think them three fights, what Wilder and uh, Tyson had, look what he did to Wilder. You know what I mean? He 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 looked like a totally different fighter. No disrespect to Joe Parker, you know, he he looked a shell of his former self, and you never know. You know, the, them three fights might have took it out of Tyson as well. I don't think so, to be honest with you. I think he just took him lightly, uh, and I think Tyson at his best beats Usyk at his best. I think yeah, that's it. He's got the height, reach, speed. Uh, he can mix it up close, he can mix at a distance, he can go southpaw, he can go half a dot, you know what I mean? I think mean, everything he does, he does better than Usage. But Usage's size, being when I mean size, I mean his lack of size, <laughs> the fact that he's a smaller man, because Tyson's been fighting, you know, Big Wilder, Dillian White, you know, big heavyweights, where all of a sudden he's got this little whipper snapper, hasn't he now? Bing, 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 you know what I mean? Smaller than him. I think that makes it makes it a harder fight for Tyson. But ultimately, I do think he'll find a way. I mean, he's, he's so hard to work out, Tyson. You know what I mean? You know, when the boxing brain on usage, you know, is, is probably the best, one of the best out there in boxing. And I tell you what, he's going to need it to suss out Tyson because there's nothing Tyson can't do, can they? And I think he'll come back rejuvenated. You know, he what Put everybody, put the record straight after that, you know, not too great performance last time. And I think he will. Final one from me, Ricky. Taylor Cattrall too, an atmosphere which I'm sure <clears throat> to have boxed in when he swings around. What do you think happens in their rematch? Um, I fancy, well, I, I, you know what? I thought the first time um, Taylor was maybe a slight favourite and Cap Jack fought the fight of his life. Uh, I was devastated for Jack. I've known Jack, you know, a few years, and he trains with Jamie. You know, um, you know Jamie Moore, my pal, and we're all, we're all family out here in Manchester and, and all that. So I was devastated, you know, to to have an opportunity that like Jack did to have all the belts. You know what I mean? And then he didn't get the de decision. <clears throat> and there could be one thing, you know, you know Taylor could have had a stinker, and Jack's had the best night of his night of his life. There, it could that could be it. Oh, Jack is a lot better fighter than we knew. We knew Jack was a quality fighter, but I think he he he's he blown us all away with his performance last time, you know. So I mean, if that's the case, Jack could go out and do the same again. I hope he goes out and does the same again, to be honest with you. You know, um he knows in his mind and his heart that he got the better of him last time, and he's just got to go out there and believe in himself that he can do the, the same. And if he does that, I said he's got a, a great uh, chance of doing it, but sod's law, sometimes it doesn't work out you know, that night, that nice, does it? You know, 
You never know, you know. Jack fought the fight of his life that night, he didn't get the fight, but, but Josh Taylor might fight the fight of his life, <laughs> you know, come the rematch. So it's it's one of them. I would say it's a 50-50, but um, I'm no disrespect to J Josh Taylor. I've, I've met him and seen him loads of times, lovely cracking kid, but I'm in, I'm in team catch up. I hope Jack does it. Ricky, it's a pleasure to catch up with you. Um, mm. I look forward to seeing you soon. I might see you in Manchester this week. You about for Gil Barrett? Uh, I am, yeah. I'm going to go and see him, yes. So, well, it's, it's the next one coming through that I think can be a world champion. I mean, we've all done it. There's me and there's, there's Crawler and, you know, and Scott Quaid, Terry Flanagan, you know what I mean? I think I think um, Zelfa uh, has the ability, how he's improved, you know what I mean? He's He's got... We he always knew he had the speed and the boxing ability is... The solidness to him about now is he's, he's he's took everything on board. He's learned he's learned the game and it and he's gone up the, the correct way. They brought him through with the opposition and level of opponents and stuff like that. And I think I think Zelfa will be our next one definitely. Well, Ricky, I look forward to seeing you this week. Um, thank <clears> you <throat> for your time, and I'll see you soon. Pleasure, mate. Thank you.